Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Space Mike, and today we're going to talk about all of the orbital rocket launches that occurred during September of 2018. So let's jump right into it and check out what progress has been made over the past months. First up from China, we have a Long March 2C rocket, which launched at 3.15 Coordinated Universal Time on Friday, September 7th, from Launch Complex 9 at the Taiyuan Space Center in Jiangxi Province, located in northeastern China. The payload was the Haiyang 1C, a Chinese maritime observation satellite designed to monitor ocean pollution, measure sea temperatures, and track ship movements. This isn't the first Haiyang satellite. Haiyang 1A launched in 2002, 1B in 2007, and another satellite, 1D, is going to be launching in 2019. This was the 24th space flight for China in 2018. But moving right along, we also had a Falcon 9 Block 5 rocket, which launched at 4.45 Coordinated Universal Time on Monday, September 10th from Space Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The payload was the Telstar 18 Vantage communication satellite, also known as AppStar 5C, which is providing satellite TV, cell phone, broadband, and in-flight Wi-Fi over a coverage area spanning from India and Pakistan in the west to Hawaii in the east. This was the first flight of this this particular booster. It's not a reflown booster. However, it did land on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You in the Atlantic. This was the 29th successful booster landing for SpaceX overall, and the 23rd space flight for the United States in 2018. And then we have a rocket that probably deserves its own video because it was the last rocket launch of its kind. Of course, I'm talking about the Delta II rocket, which launched at 1302 Coordinated Universal Time on Saturday, September 15th. The last Delta II rocket. It launched from Space Launch Complex 2 West at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, and its payload was NASA's ICESat-2 mission, a mission that's using lasers to measure global ice sheet changes from space. It also deployed four CubeSats into orbit after it deployed ICESat-2. It was the 155th Delta II rocket mission since 1989. It has a very memorable flight history, including the most spectacular rocket failure on January 17, 1997, launching a GPS satellite. Boy, was that scary. But Delta II launched a lot of popular payloads as well. It launched NASA's first three Mars rovers, Sojourner, Spirit, and Opportunity. And along with a large portion of the GPS network, Delta II also launched the Messenger mission to Mercury, the Dawn mission to the asteroid belt, the Spitzer Space Telescope, the planet-hunting Kepler spacecraft, weather satellites, and dozens of commercial and military communication spacecraft as well. Something that's pretty cool about this is shortly after the launch, United Launch Alliance announced their plans to assemble leftover parts of a Delta II rocket to display it at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex in Florida. Yes, in the rocket garden, alongside all the other icons of the U.S. rocket industry. And uh, I'm really excited for that. That's going to be really cool to see a Delta II rocket amongst that display. In any case, this was the 24th space flight for the United States in 2018. Moving right along, we had a polar satellite launch vehicle from India in its core alone configuration, also known as the PSLV-CA. It launched at 1638 Coordinated Universal Time on Sunday, September 16th, launching from the first launch pad at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Triharakota, India. Its payloads were the SSTL-S1 number 4, a an optical imaging satellite, and the Novasar-S, a radar imaging satellite, both of which were built by Surrey Satellite Technology from England. Novasar-S1 has an S-band synthetic aperture radar, which aims to validate a radar imager lighter and more compact than those that have been flown on previous radar reconnaissance satellites. The SSTL-S1 number 4 observation satellite has an optical camera and telescope, which will supply high-resolution imagery of the ground. Both of these satellites were built in conjunction with the British government and a lot of their data will be supplied to the British government. This PSLV mission on Sunday was designated PSLV-C42 and it was the 44th flight of a polar satellite launch vehicle overall and the fourth Indian space flight in 2018. But surprise surprise we had another Chinese launch. This time it was a Long March 3B rocket with a YZ-1 or Expedition 1 upper 
upper stage. It launched at 1407 Coordinated Universal Time on Wednesday, September 19th from Launch Complex 3 at the Zhicheng Satellite Launch Center in Sichuan, southwest China. The payloads for this mission were the Beidou 3 M13 and M14 satellites, two navigation satellites for the Chinese navigation network similar to GPS. Beidou is the Chinese word for compass, and it currently consists of 33 operational satellites. 40 have been launched in total, but some of them were only test satellites and some of them have been decommissioned. They're spread between various orbits in geostationary, IGSO, which is inclined geosynchronous orbit, and MEO, medium Earth orbit. The two satellites being launched on this mission are part of the third generation of Beidou satellites, thus the Beidou 3 designation, but they're also designated M13 and M14, which means that they're the 13th and 14th medium Earth orbit satellites being launched in the third generation of Beidou navigation satellites. Make sense? This was the 25th space flight for China in 2018. We're not done yet though. Worldwide rocket launches kept on going and we got to move right along with an H2B rocket which launched from Japan. This launched at 1752 coordinated universal time on Saturday, September 22nd from the Tanagashima Space Center. The payload was the HTV-7 cargo vehicle also named Konatori 7. It was carrying 6,200 kilograms of supplies including new lithium-ion batteries to upgrade the current nickel hydride batteries at the International Space Station. It also had a small capsule that will try to see if they can recover 20 kilograms of materials. Yes, a re-entry capsule. Although this mission for Conatory 7 is continuing upgrades to the International Space Station, the small capsule being used to test recovery methods could eventually be scaled up and crew rated to return an individual astronaut home. Japan has had plans for a long time of having their own human spaceflight program, and they could easily use the service module of the HTV to be the what propels their capsule forward. So this is a step forward for Japan to see if they can recover this capsule safely and they've done re-entry capsules before with their Hayabusa but oh my gosh I would really love for Japan to have their own human spaceflight program. Also on board were three Japanese CubeSats which will be transferred into the space station and then released into orbit from the Kibo module. Five days after the launch, on Thursday, September 27th, astronauts Drew Feistel and Serena Anyon chancellor operated the Canada arm and grappled the HTV-7 Conaturi spacecraft and captured it at 3.34 Coordinated Universal Time and over the next couple hours were successfully able to berth it to the International Space Station. Astronauts Alexander Gerst and Nick Haig were supposed to be doing a spacewalk to start installing some of those new lithium-ion batteries that were brought up by the Conatory, but it looks like that's not going to be happening anytime soon with the current schedule changes at the ISS. But in any case, let's move on. Next in September, we had an Ariane 5 launch. This Ariane 5 had the ECA upper stage, and it just so happened to be the 100th launch of an Ariane 5. It launched at 2238 Coordinated Universal time on Tuesday, September 25th, launching from the ELA-3, Ariane Launch Area Number 3, at the Corot Space Center in French Guiana. Its payloads were the Horizons 3E satellite and the Azure Space 2-slash-Intelsat-38 communication satellites. According to Intelsat CEO Steven Spengler, the Horizons 3E spacecraft is considered to be the most advanced satellite built by Intelsat. This is because it has a really neat instrument called the multi-port amplifier that enables Intelsat to adjust the power given to different beams in the satellite's coverage. This makes it a lot more responsive to changes in demand. Now the second satellite is a shared satellite, Intelsat 38 slash Azure Space 2. Intelsat's half of the satellite supports television broadcasts in Central and Eastern Europe, as well as the Asia Pacific region, and it also provides broadband connectivity for corporate networks and government services in Africa. It also has a steerable KU band beam that can be repositioned anywhere over Africa within 20 minutes. Now the other half of the satellite is Azure Cosmos's, which is the operation second telecommunications satellite. It probably has similar capabilities to the Intelsat half of the satellite, but as the second communication satellite of this company, it, they have their own purposes for it. And it's in cooperation with the government of Azerbaijan. This was the fifth space flight for Europe in 2018. 
But moving right along, we had another space flight from China this month. Three rocket launches from China in one month. Uh, this particular launch was the Kuaizhou 1A rocket launching for X Space, and it launched at 413 Coordinated Universal Time on Saturday, September 29th from the Jiquan Space Center. Its payload was the Senta Space 1 S1. It's a small satellite which is going to be in a sun synchronous orbit at an altitude of 700 kilometers. And right now, the use of the satellite is unknown, but of course, assumptions are being made and it may be for Earth observations. But what we do know is that the rocket is made by X Space Technology, which is a branch of the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. They're the manufacturers of the rocket and they look to provide commercial launch services to customers around the world in a cost-effective and reliant way. Something that's really cool about it is it launches out of a mobile launcher truck and it has the capability of launching 200 kilogram payloads into a sun-synchronous orbit. We might start seeing a lot more of these Kaizhou rockets soon and it's really similar to the Long March 11 rocket but that's something that's officially for the Chinese Space Agency. So ah, this is crazy. So we got to go through in summary because this was the 26th space flight for China in 2018. And as we can see, China is at 26, the United States is at 24, Russia at 10, Japan now at 5, Europe now at 5, India at 4, and New Zealand still at 1, with a total of 75 rocket launches that have occurred so far in 2018. A strong tie has been held between China and the United States almost all year, but it looks like China is starting to edge ahead a little bit. Who's going to be the rocket champion of 2018? I have a dollar bet with Ben Higginbotham from tomorrow that China's going to be the winner, but at the same time, as an American, I'm really hoping that SpaceX comes through for us and starts launching a bunch of rockets and we at least have a tie with China. Ah! But what do you think? Do you think China's going to win or do you think SpaceX is going to come through? Be sure to tune in next month where we're going to cover all of October's rocket launches. But in the meantime, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video and share this video with your friends and in appropriate spaceflight forums. If you'd really like to support the show though, you can head on over to patreon.com slash epic future space and sign up at whatever level that you feel comfortable with and you're really helping a lot thank you so much to the folks that are donating already you're helping me to do some pretty amazing things i cannot wait to share with you guys a lot of the details about my trip to jordan I had an amazing time there and here's just a little teaser photo for you oh my gosh i was at the freaking pyramids man can't wait to just tell you even just about that so ah uh, be sure to stay tuned I'm going to have a lot more videos over this coming week. There's a lot of things to catch up on while I was outside of the country. First off, there was the whole IAC, the International Astronomical Congress that was held in Bremen, Germany, and there's so much news coming out of that. Of course, I already talked about the Soyuz MS-10 spacecraft, and we'll talk about that as there's more updates and the investigation is officially over, and there's just so, there's just so much happening right now and I can't wait to talk about it. So be sure to tune in next time, but until the next time I see you guys, keep on moving onwards and upwards, and don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.